What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the best add-ons that come shipped with Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that you can access and enable all of these by going up to edit, preferences, and then under your add-ons to enable these, you would just check the box next to the add-on that you want to enable. And all these are available for free inside of Blender. Right, so we're gonna start with Bolt Factory. So Bolt Factory is a tool that adds the ability to add a bolt to Blender. So if you do a Shift A and do an Add Mesh and click on Bolt, what that's going to do is that's going to create a bolt inside of Blender. And then within the settings, you can adjust things based on presets right here. So you can use it to create nuts and bolts. You can also adjust things like the bit type that's going to be included in here. And you can adjust the bit depth. You can adjust the head height and the overall length of your bolts and the different threads. So if you're doing anything where you work with nuts and bolts inside of Blender, this could be a great tool for getting those added. Edit Mesh Tools is a tool set for Blender that's contained inside of Edit Mode. So you tab into Edit Mode and you get all of these different options inside of the Edit menu on the right hand side. So this tool set contains a number of different tools. Some of them are actually contained in the left hand side of Blender, but there are tools in here for doing things like randomizing vertices. Um, there's also a great tool for offsetting edges that you can use in order to offset edges out, as well as a function for setting edge length. So what it does is it allows you to select an edge and then set the length that's in there um, and it'll automatically adjust the length of that object inside of Blender. So if you're doing any kind of like mesh editing, this one's definitely worth checking out. All right, so F2 is a tool that's designed to make the process of adding quad geometry to your models easier. So basically what it does is it allows you, instead of having to come in here and create like edge loops or other things like that, it gives you the ability to select a vertex like this and then just tap the F key and it'll create a new quad based on that vertex. So notice that this really works on inside corners like this. So if you select this corner, tap the F key, it's gonna create those new vertices. In addition, it's also gonna give you the ability on spaces like this one um, to be able to come in here and tap the F key and notice how you can quickly add in the extra edges in here to make this quad um, geometry. So instead of having to, or make this quad topology. So instead of you having to come in here and actually like adjust those manually and use like the bridge edge loops function, um, this tool makes that a lot easier. All right, so loop tools is gonna give you a number of tools inside of edit mode that you can use in order to edit geometry. So for example, let's say we were to select a couple faces in here like this, and let's say that we wanted to add like a circular insert or something like that. Well, there's a tool in here called circle that's basically going to take your vertices and move them into a circular shape like this. Well, then you could just use this in order to extrude this down like this in order to create a circular shape on this more complex mesh. So in addition, there's also other tools in here for other things as well. So there's a bridge function. Um, there's also a tool in here for flattening vertices. So let's say, for example, that we were to select, so let's say we were to select a series of vertices like this. If we were to select the option for flatten and go with the normal view, you could use this in order to flatten these just like this. So notice how it takes all of these and it makes them flat along the X plane right here or the Z plane, depending on what you have selected. So you can use this in order to quickly edit that geometry in here to make it flat. You can also use the loft function in here in order to create surfaces across multiple loops like this. You can use the number of segments in order to add segments in between the bridge gaps as well as the strength, which is gonna allow you to kind of adjust how, uh, how harsh the transition is in here like this. Geodesic domes, is gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna help you design geodesic domes inside Blender. So notice how if you adjust the frequency up, and let's go ahead and look at our wireframe real quick. Notice how this is creating a geodesic dome in here based on the information you give it. And then you can adjust um, the kind of object that it is, the kind of class that's in here, other things like that. Notice how these are all going to affect um, the geometry that's created in here. So the octahedron, for example, is gonna be different than the tetrahedron, but you can also use this to adjust things like your radius. So you can make this bigger or smaller, other things like that as well. So this is great for really quickly creating geodesic shapes inside of Blender. All right, so this next one is a really fun one. It's called Real Snow. And basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to select an object. So like this one, for example, we'll use our Bonnie object and you can set a height and all you have to do is click the button and it's gonna add a snow material 
on top of your object. So you can see how it came in here and it added snow on top of the vertical faces inside of this object. And the snow looks really good. It looks like it's got some kind of a normal applied to it, making it look a lot like snow. So you can really use this with any object. You can adjust your coverage, you can adjust your height, and then click on the add snow function in order to quickly add snow to your models. So Discombobulator probably wins the award for the best name of a Blender add-on, and it has some interesting functionality as well. Basically the way that it works is you select a piece of geometry like this. You do a shift A and you do a mesh, and there's an option here for Discombobulator after you enable the add-on, obviously. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to um, basically come in here and create randomizations on an object. So if you do any kind of like sci-fi modeling or anything like that, notice what this does, this allows you to use that random extrusion type thing in here in order to quickly create different kinds of shapes like this. So you can adjust the minimum heights, you can adjust the taper of the shapes that are in here, as well as you can use the option down below to add what's known as doodads, which is just gonna be some additional, um, it's gonna be some additional geometry that's in here. So you can pick your own geometry in there for, the, for that as well. But this is really interesting for that sci-fi style of modeling. All right, so Ivy Gen is a tool that allows you quickly generate Ivy inside of Blender. So let's say for example, that I was to do a shift right click and you're gonna tap the N key and under the create tab, you're gonna see the Ivy generator. Well, um, this is gonna place Ivy wherever your 3D cursor goes. So in this case, I'm gonna place it on the surface right here. But then we're just gonna click the button to add new Ivy. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate an Ivy object that lives on this surface right here. And then you can go through and you can adjust different things in here. So let's say for example that we wanted our IV to be longer. So let's say we had a max length of three meters. We could adjust this and then click on the button to update our IV. And notice what that's gonna do is that's going to update this IV to align with that new length that we gave it. So one thing to note is you do wanna make sure that you're using a material with an opacity map so that you're not just getting a whole bunch of singular planes in here when you apply a texture to this object. So the stored views add-on is going to allow you under your view, menu right here, it's gonna allow you to save different views for quick access later. So for example, let's say I have a view like this one and I want to save this view, I'm just gonna click on save current. You can rename these, so I could call this front, I could create a new view and I could call it back. And then to navigate between the different views, you can just click on them right here. So that can be a really quick way to save different view locations inside of Blender. All right, so VR Scene Inspection is an add-on designed to help you um, actually visit your scenes inside of virtual reality. So basically it's a tool that goes off to the side that allows you to click a button and add a virtual reality session. So you can use this in order to step into your scenes. Um, I don't have a video for this right now. Um, this is something we can touch on in the future if you're super interested in that. But do make sure that you uh, review the head headset matter displays section to make sure your headset is supported. So measure it is a tool set designed to help you measure different things inside of your model. So for example, if I was to tab into edit mode and select this edge right here, measure it is gonna give you a window over in the view measure it tools where you can show measurements. So for example, let's say that we select this segment right here and click on this, it's gonna show you a measurement of the segment. And you can add as many measurements in here as you want. So you can click in here like this and notice how that's gonna add measurements for all of those. And you can adjust the way that all of those look as well as toggling them on and off in the settings down below. So scatter objects is a tool that's built in to quickly scatter objects along surfaces inside of Blender. So this one's a little bit confusing. There's not a lot of documentation on it. Basically the way that it works is if you tap the N key, notice how there's settings in here for your object scatter. So you can set like the object scale, other things like that. But then the way that you access this one is you start by selecting the objects you wanna scatter and then the object you wanna scatter along last. And then you just type the F3 key and you wanna look for object scatter objects. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to draw on this surface. And notice how when you draw on this surface, this is randomly scattering those objects on this surface. So this is an interesting quick built-in tool. Um, notice I hit the inner key in order to finish this. So when you hit the inner key, that's gonna finalize this. This is an interesting tool for quickly scattering objects in here. It's probably a little bit better to use geometry nodes if you can figure out how to do that. 
but this is a quick, easy way to do that if you just need a quick and dirty um, object scatter. All right, so Carver is a tool that's built in. It's basically designed to help you cut objects in Blender. Um, pretty much all of the time, you're gonna wanna be in like an orthographic view, so like a straight on view like this one. But basically the way it works is you press Shift or Control Shift X, that's gonna activate the tool. Notice how it tells you you can add different cut types. So for example, if I was to click and drag in here like this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna cut through this object based on where I draw that rectangle. So that's why you wanna be in the orthographic view because if you're in a diagonal view like this one and then you do it, so like this, for example, notice how it's gonna cut this based on your current view that's in here. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to be on that straight up and down view. But it gives you a couple different ways to um, make those cuts. So for example, you can tap the space key and the line section is going to allow you to actually draw inside a blender like this. And then you can just tap the space key to finish this, but that's gonna draw a shape based on something you draw. Or if you tap space again, that's gonna allow you to add a circle. So we're gonna single click, move our mouse, click again in order to cut a circle. So this is a quick, easy cutting tool for Blender. Align Tools is a tool set designed to help you align rotation, location, and scale of different objects. So let's say we had these three boxes like this and you wanted to align these two with this object. Well, notice how it tells you what the active object is, but you would select these by doing a shift click. Then you would select this one last and you can see how you can use this in order to align their X location or you could align everything. I wouldn't align everything because it's just gonna put them in exactly the same place, but it gives you the ability then to um, do different kinds of alignment. So let's say I was to rotate this, for example, we could align the rotations of these objects as well. So this is a great tool for getting objects to line up inside a blender. So extra objects is gonna do exactly what it's gonna sound like. It's gonna give you a bunch of different, it's gonna give you a bunch of different additional functions down below for different objects you can add inside of your mesh functions. So for example, it's got like a rock generator where you can come in here and you can create multiple different kinds of rocks or other things like that procedurally. You can also use it to add things like a twisted torus in here if you wanted to do that. Notice how you do have functions in here in order to adjust that. Or um, one of my favorites is if you go down to your extras, right? There's also tools in here for like wall factory. So wall factory is gonna create an actual like masonry block wall inside a blender. And you can actually adjust this so that it creates the actual blocks inside of your model. So it just gives you a bunch of additional shapes that you can use in order to do different things inside of Blender. So import images as planes can be massively helpful if you're bringing in things like floor plans. So for example, if you do a shift A, go to add image, notice how this gives you the option for images as planes. So that's actually gonna let you pick an image file and bring it in as an actual 3D plane or as an actual flat plane that's real geometry inside of Blender. So for example, if I was to bring my floor plan like this, what that does is that lets me bring this in as an actual piece of geometry. Well then, we could actually scale this up, set it to scale, and draw on top of it. So this is really great for bringing in things like reference images for modeling inside of Blender. All right, so next, we've got one of my favorites, which is Ant Landscapes. And so what Ant Landscapes does is it actually allows you to procedurally generate terrain by doing an add mesh landscape. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to generate this terrain right here. And it's got a number of different presets in here. So like canyons or other kinds of terrain. Let's go ahead and let's drop our wireframe on just so you can see the topology that's in here. But it's got a ton of different presets in here for different surfaces. So like lakes or other things like that. You can also come in here and you can adjust these things. So you can adjust like your mesh size, for example. So let's say I wanted this to be a lot bigger. I could just add a 10 and a 10 like this, but then you can adjust things like the noise size. So how much noise is actually being created in here. You can create the actual height, um, other things like that inside of this tool. So this is a really fantastic tool for really quickly creating um, terrains inside of Blender. So Sapling Tree Generator is a really popular add-on. So basically what it does is it allows you to do an add curve and you can click on the option for Sapling Tree Generator. And it's actually going to generate 3D trees inside of Blender. And so notice how there's options in here for a ton of different things having to do with like your geometry, for example, as well as things like leaves. So you can add leaves to your trees. And so down at the bottom, there's a number of presets 
as well. So things like willows or birch trees, depending on the kind of tree that you want to create, you can use this in order to do that really quickly. But in addition to being able to create these really quickly, what you can also do is you can also adjust this, right? So you can use the sliders and values in here in order to adjust different things about your trees. So you can set the number of branches that are in here. You can adjust the way that the branches are distributed along your tree by using a slider right here. You can also randomize it just by changing the seed that's in here. So this gives you a lot of control, um, especially if you need to create like really quick trees for like context or other things like that. So there are a ton of other things in here that you can set. So things like your branch radius, those are all gonna be adjustable. Um, all of the leaves are also going to be adjustable. So if I show these, for example, notice how I can adjust the number of leaves as well as the shape of the leaves and the way that they hang on my trees, other things like that. So really adjustable, quick way to create trees inside of Blender. So this next one is fantastic. I didn't even know it was a thing until I was doing research for this video, but basically what it does is it's called tri lighting. And what it does is it allows you to quickly create three point lighting for Blender. So if I go into the add light and I click on three point lights, notice how you do have to have the add on enabled obviously, but if I click on three point lights, what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate three lights around my object that are going to light it. And so notice how if I click on this button right here, you can adjust things like the height of the lights as well as the distance from an object. And the cool thing about this is these are all kind of constrained to my Bonnie object, meaning what I can do is I can adjust things like my angle. Notice how if I adjust my angle in here, um, that's going to adjust these while they're still remaining pointed at my object. So you can use this in order to really quickly create three-point lighting setups inside a blender, which I had no idea that you could do that. So super excited about that. You can also adjust the energy of the lights right here. All right, and then the last one, the number one on our list, and you had to see this coming, is Node Wrangler. So Node Wrangler is a fantastic node editing tool for Blender. It has a ton of different functionalities um, that you can use in order to make your life a lot easier um, when you're working with different nodes. Um, probably my favorite is the option for the smart node setup. So if you go to the shader editor, click on your principled BSDF, as long as you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can do a control shift T. That's gonna allow you to go find um, all of your different material maps, select them, and then click on the button for principled texture setup. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna automatically create and set up a texture down below with your different nodes. So notice how this automatically brought in your color map, your roughness map, your normal map, and your displacement, and it set them all up inside of Blender. So, in addition, it also UV mapped everything. So it set up your mapping. So now what you can do is you can use this in order to adjust the size really quickly of your material. So let's say we wanted this to be three, three, and three. Notice how this was set up really quickly inside a blender without you having to go through and do the manual node setup. So there's a ton of other functions in here. So things like Lazy Connect, um, which is gonna allow you to really quickly make links between different nodes, um, other things like that. I recommend going and looking in the documentation because there's just so many features contained inside a Node Wrangler. Um, it's something that really you should be using no matter what, as long as you use any kind of nodes in Blender. All right, so that's my top 20 list. Leave a comment below. Let me know if I missed anything, if you agree with this list. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some tutorials about some of these add-ons in, um, on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.